Live from the studios at Brigham Young University, the award-winning 11 News at Noon starts now. A trooper and a family are in the hospital after a crash on I-15. We have the latest on their conditions. Made in Mexico, how an import tax on foreign goods will impact Utah families and businesses. BYU police released their annual campus report. What they published might surprise you. Sweet, sweet revenge. How the long ball helped the men's basketball team get revenge on the Toreros. Speaking out, what a new ruling has to say about athletes and their rights to freedom of speech. And ball like a girl, what BYU did to celebrate women in athletics. The number one team in the nation, no more. BYU takes down Gonzaga and social media erupts. Women's basketball ends their senior night with a bang. And spring football is underway. How will Tanner Mangum impact this year's offense? I'm Montana Sean. And I'm Taylor Decker. And the winner of the 2017 BYU vs. Gonzaga is Gonzaga. Oh, excuse me. We made a mistake. It's actually BYU. And it's time for the two. Raging wildfires sweep across the Midwest. A California Trump rally turns violent, and the National Spelling Bee gets an unlikely new contestant. This is your look at news from across the nation. Berkeley's mayor is standing behind the actions of his police officers following a violent anti-Trump march. Law enforcement responded to protesters who had pipes and two-by-fours loaded with nails. People are questioning the officers' methods towards handling the protesters. Police say they released more videos and photos from the demonstration in hopes of identifying those who came to fight. A grass fire burned more than 30,000 acres of land in northeast Colorado yesterday. It took more than 70 firefighters from 13 fire departments to contain the raging flames. Although there were no injuries, the fire destroyed three homes and one other structure. A shelter was set up for people with damaged homes. A five-year-old Oklahoma girl qualified for the Scripps National Spelling Bee. She is now the youngest person ever to participate in the national event. Edith Fuller is a gifted speller. She is the new regional champion after beating 50 students, some even twice her age. Edith will now begin preparing for the Scripps National Spelling Bee. Mom and Dad will be along, alongside to help her make history. And that's your look at news from across the nation. Next, Wildlife Rescue, what one stunned reporter caught on live video. He is, oh my gosh, I see something coming out right now. Oh my, there he is! I see him! See if our, uh, there he is! Well, Sarah, weather has been crazy this week. Will it calm down this weekend? It actually will. I have some great news for you about this weekend. You're going to get to enjoy all of that new snow. Your weather update coming up next. And when Tuka Cooktube comes back, BYU legend Johnny Linehan stops by the studio. Stay tuned. All right, I'm going to turn the time back over to Taylor and Montana to interview our special guest. All right, we want to welcome the one, the only, the Kiwi Cowboy, up-and-coming country singer, BYU football's record-breaking punter, Johnny Linehan. What an introduction. I have to take a big breath for that. <laughs> Thank you for joining us well, today. That, that was a nice introduction, yes. I'm glad you liked it. Privileged to be here. If you're going to introduce me like that, you should come back all the time. <laughs> right? Yeah, Johnny, you're quite the <laughs> BYU legend. So, listen, uh, spring, spring training starts Monday. Are you excited? What are, what are you kind of feeling going back into football training? I'm excited. I'm excited to go out and kick some footballs and, yeah, get better as a team. But uh, it's just going to be fun to strap on the helmet again and kind of have some fun, even though we're still quite a way out before the season starts. All right. So a lot of people are surprised and happy that you decided to come back and play this year. What was the process in deciding to come back? Uh, I had to apply for a senior citizen's uh, discount <laughs> pretty much now that I'm the oldest guy on the team. But uh, <laughs> No, I, I think I always knew that I had another season uh, eligible that I could redshirt one that I didn't play my freshman or sophomore year. And uh, I, I always had in the back of my mind that I was going to come back, but uh, I, I didn't know what was going to happen like with family life and everything. So I didn't want to say I was coming back if I couldn't come back. But after I talked about it with Marissa and uh, my family, I thought, man, it's, it's a good opportunity for me to come back. And if I have a good season, who knows what the future could hold. So. All yeah. lined up for you. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, it's great to have you back here, Johnny. And hey, we have to ask you, fourth and 19 play, what was going through your mind when you were asked by Coach Kalani Sataki to run it? And it, it looks like you tweeted out a few days ago, write a sad story, you only using three <laughs> words, and you use fourth and 19. Yeah, with the, when they called the play, I knew it was going to make for some good tweets later, whether it was successful or not. So I was all for that. <laughs> 
But uh, no, I, I, I don't know. I just, I thought, man, it was probably not going to work, but I'm going to trust the coaching staff and just try my best to do what I can. And I didn't do a very good job at that, but it was fun. We'd do it again. That's what Coach Sataka keeps saying. So who knows? But do you know the important thing is that you owned it? You could have taken it in a completely different direction and you owned it. And now it's, it's funny. Like people talk about it. I don't know if it's still so funny to you, but you know, yeah. Yeah, but it's funny. But okay, so throughout my days, I honestly just sit there and randomly start thinking, punting, kicking. <laughs> I love them every day. And that's your song. So is, can we expect another one next season or whatever? Yeah, so I think I have a song picked out. But oh, cool. um, yeah, so. Okay, which one? Well, can I, can't, I can't say just yet, uh, but, uh, but I, I don't think, I want to do country again, but I don't think I can because it was, uh, I don't know, I felt like I nailed the first one with country. I'm going to have to change it up. Like so yeah, it's just going to be, going to be a little bit of hip hop. Yeah. yeah so. Maybe even Adele. Yeah. Right? That, that, that would be awesome. Yeah. Adele would be great. Who I can totally see it. So knows. I need to ask, so you're a Twitter king. You're always on the twi Twitter machine. How do you get verified for Twitter? Um, I, I don't know. I think it has to do with doing a country song and uh, faking a punt from your own end zone. So I don't know. That probably has something to do with it, but yeah, we'll see. The truth is you can apply for it, and I just applied and got it. So, yeah, but we'll keep that on the DL. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Guys, we always love having Jeremy, and you're just amazing. And we'll be right back here in just a couple minutes. WCC Player of the Year and BYU Women's Basketball are starting to become synonymous. 2017 marks the fourth straight year that a Cougar has taken home the hardware. Congratulations to WCC Player of the Year Cassie Broadhead. She upped her stats from last season from 4 to 18 points per game and from 16 minutes to 38 minutes a game, leading the WCC in both categories. The junior leader's control of the game and ability to create shots for both herself and the rest of her team really made her a lock for the prestigious award. She follows in the footsteps of other stellar players in Lexi Eaton Reidolch and Jennifer Hampson, both of which drafted into the WNBA. Add forward Kalani Purcell to the awards list. She was named the WCC Defensive Player of the Year. The New Zealand native was a beast on the defensive end of the floor, averaging 10 rebounds, two and a half steals, and a block. All good for top five in the conference. Mackenzie Pulsford made the all-conference second team after averaging 13 points and leading the league in steals with 70 total on the season. Newcomer Brenna chased surprise fans and the coaches in her maiden season by leading the bench in scoring and steals. She was named to the WCC All-Freshman Team. Congratulations Cougars and good luck in Vegas. Day two of spring football practice has just finished up and Tanner Mangum looked good under center, making accurate quick throws to his receivers. This will be a big storyline heading into the season with how the receiving core was less than stellar throughout all last season. Senior Fred Warner also gave us some new information on who's in charge at the linebacker position. Uh, it's gone well. Uh, so I think with Kalani, as our, Kalani and Coach uh, Kafusi as our new uh, coaches uh, for linebacker, we've learned a lot just in the first few days, um, just with fundamentals and technique. So I'm enjoying that. Uh, lots of competition out there. It's good to be back with you know, Butch and uh, Francis. Uh, having us three back is going to be huge for us. The football team will continue practice throughout spring all the way until mid-April before they head out for summer break. We've got breaking news in Jimmerland. According to the Vertical, China MVP and all-around great guy, Jimmer Fredette is in discussions with multiple teams to make an NBA comeback this month. The former number 10 overall pick is averaging 37.5 points a game with the Shanghai Sharks. Expect playoff teams in need of some scoring off the bench. I'm talking to you, Washington Wizards, to go after the BYU alum. If you are a fan of the NFL, fantasy football, or you didn't, don't live under a non-sports rock, you know who this guy is. Adrian Peterson, a household name in the NFL. Well, he may be looking for a new house. The 2012 NFL MVP was re released by the Minnesota Vikings and for the first time in his 10-year career is a free agent. He's been a, it's been a rough few years for the former rushing leader, missing 28 games over the past three seasons. The 32-year-old running back will most likely do one of three things. One, re-sign with the Vikings for less money. Two, sign with a Super Bowl contender. Or take the biggest contract possible maybe in the $40 million range. The Jazz took their three-game winning streak to OKC against MVP candidate Russell Westbrook and the Thunder, and for the home team, it is all about the three ball early and often. The Thunder hit 12 of 13 threes in the first half, thanks to Westbrook and Dougie McBuckets, each hitting four apiece. The Jazz trailed by 10 at the half, but they'd come back. 
Hayward from the corner, he finished with 19 points. Oh, and Joe Johnson, what an addition he's been. 13 points off the bench, clean this three to trim the lead to one. Then Rodney Hood hits this tough step back jumper to give the Jazz their first lead of the game. But Westbrook proved to be too much. He hits this three-pointer that swung the momentum and the game for the Thunder. He finished with 43 points, 11 rebounds, and 11 assists. The Jazz had one last look to try and tie the game, but Hayward didn't get it off in time, and the Thunder, behind Westbrook's 30th triple-double this season, hand the Jazz the 109-106 defeat. Now, if you're a Warriors fan, you might want to look away. Former Thunder forward Kevin Durant got injured on this play when Zaza Pachulia fell backwards and hit Durant's knee. He's been diagnosed with an MCL sprain and is out indefinitely. He will be reevaluated in a month in hopes of a return before the playoffs.